Bah, bonjour à tous. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here for this conference. Today, we will present, first of all, our uh, speakers so that you know who we are. We will uh, talk about the Crédit Agricole program. We'll look at this program, we'll uh, present the key dates and so on. Then we'll uh, tell you about the CyberArc blueprint, then the added value brought by Capgemini to this uh, model. Afterwards, we will tell you how Crédit Agricole reinvented itself. We'll tell you about the partnership we've set up. We'll tell you about the new goals and then we'll finish with a conclusion and a Q&A session. First of all, as I was saying, the different speakers, I'm Mathieu. I'm in, in charge of uh, the PAM uh, services at Sojeti. And we have also Julien. Yes, I'm Julien I'm at Kajib. Uh, we work with the different entities of the Crédit Agricole. I'm a technical leader for the PAM services and I work within the Cyber Defense Center of Capgemini. Badrid Enderi at CyberArc. My job is to uh, support our different clients so that they use our solutions the best possible way. Let's maybe start with Crédit Agricole and Kajip. Yes, very briefly, Kajip. Kajip. Well, yeah, uh, I'm going to move on with the slides. All right, so Kajip. Kajip is in charge of the digital uh, aspects of a Crédit Agricole. We are operating throughout France. We have different sites in France, actually, more than 4,000 uh, people at, on 17 sites in France. So we have major presence in France and we have uh, major cyber activities uh, throughout France with the Cyber Defense Center. Very briefly, what about Capgemini? Capgemini is a very large uh, company, more than 260,000 people throughout the world. But let's focus on uh, access uh, management and PAM, so privilege access management. So on IAM, obviously, we have more than 100 advisors, including some are coming from Lille. We are present in France and uh, around the world. We mostly focus on four uh, pillars. We first of all have the fast track. We are quite proud of that methodology. With the fast track, it is possible to understand what is going on, what are the goals, what are the best solutions, how we have to move forward. So we can make an, uh, an assessment of your uh, IS, so to speak. Then we have consulting IAM, that's something we pr propose at uh, Crédit Agricole. Then we have integration services and uh, managed services. So we uh, propose to manage all the IAM and PAM uh, services for you. Uh, Capgemini and CyberArc also have Cyber as a Service, which means that we uh, propose to host uh, a CyberArc for you and offer it as a service to you. So that's all I wanted to say regarding uh, Capgemini. I will now give the floor to Madridin uh, so that he presents CyberArc very briefly. Yes, indeed, very briefly. Uh, everybody knows CyberArc first here in the room? Yes? Okay, good. Good news. You all know CyberArc. This is a company that was created in the 1990s more than 6,900 uh, clients trust us. We secure access for more than 50% of the companies in Fortune 500. We uh, work on all the verticals. Next slide, please. Thank you.
So what are the verticals? What are the segments on which we are working? Industry, telecom, pharmaceuticals, insurance, bank, energy. You see them very specifically in France. At the moment, we have 34, 35 people based in the defense uh, area in Paris. We have more than 300 uh, customers in France, more than 200 uh, consultants certified through our partners, so customers that decided to invest in the uh, training of their staff with CyberArk. So that was for the presentation of the different stakeholders. I will now give the floor to Julien Rosé so that he tells us a bit more about the uh, KAGIP program. Let's look at the history of the program first. In 2012, we launched a CyberArk a solution. We wanted to implement a, a vault uh, and a CPM mostly to secure privileged uh, accounts. The first step aimed at uh, giving uh, safety boxes uh, to the teams so that they could uh, get used to our solutions. We also uh, created links between the different factories and so on, the different sites, and we implemented a CPM policy to start managing the different uh, privilege access accesses. So the goal at that time was to implement new services and to offer new services based on uh, control and management. But it was not something rigid. Then in 2018, we introduced PSMs and PSMPs The implementation of those components was initiated in the implementation of uh, IS within an administration. So we uh, launched those components in 2018. We also integrated the admin workstation notion. So it was a major change, especially for the technical teams because the PAM team through the a project has to understand uh, all the IT services. So it was a, a, a major step and this is why we asked Mathieu from Sojati to uh, help us indeed. Back in the days, we wanted to move forward. Uh, we wanted to challenge the technical teams uh, to see uh, the, the state of play. So we needed the support of Sojati and the teams from Sojati supported us very well. And that's at the, the moment that you went from offering a, a safety box, a service to a real uh, regulation exactly with the LPM regulation we had changes we had to implement new services so we had a different relationship with the uh, technical teams moreover as you said there were a lot of changes with the admin workstation so a lot of change at that moment yes absolutely and this uh, allowed us to set priorities on these sensitive assets uh, we had at that moment uh, a, a partial uh, visibility it was difficult for some segments to, to, to accept those changes. But then we moved on and in 2019 we created the KAGIP. KAGIP is a, a group of four information systems that are key for uh, the company. We have uh, a number of assets that is uh, quite large and increasing 
And for the PAM, which is a central uh, services that deals with the uh, privilege access management, obviously this is something key. Uh, with the creation of the KGIP, we have more embedded systems, more uh, computers and machines to cover. We looked at how we could uh, develop KGIP in order to bring a, a, a comprehensive solution that would uh, satisfy all our needs while trying to converge uh, the different systems, information systems. So for a year we've been uh, organizing workshops, we've been exchanging with the different teams in order to build KAJIP and in 2020 we started the convergence process. So the goal is to build a common information system in order to have a global solution that allows all the stakeholders of the company to have access uh, in their own services. So this is a true tool of convergence and this makes the privilege access management team uh, key when it comes to secure the systems. So from a, a secret management, we went to a, a regulatory project while adding those notions of convergence in just a few years. Yes, indeed. And when you look at the history of the, of, of the KAJIP uh, project, you see that there's been an evolution within the company, there's been an evolution of the IS, and every time we had to review our processes, our goals, in order to uh, succeed. What about the post-project difficulties and challenges? Well, with this slide, we want to present uh, the challenges we faced and how we tried to overcome those challenges. What is the top five of the challenges we faced? Well, first of all, we have technical teams that uh, face major changes. The PAM project led to many uh, changes, forced technical teams to adapt. So one of the challenges was to get the support from the technical teams. Indeed, without the technical teams, it would be impossible to implement such a large project. They had to become the drivers of the, uh, of the project. So it was the major challenge and it was one of our main goals when we uh, deployed the solution. To get the support of the technical teams, uh, thanks to feedback, we noticed that we also have to consider access uh, ergonomics in order to identify how we can bring uh, an ergonomics that is uh, adapted to the needs of the teams. Then, once you get the support from the technical teams, when you have a good access ergonomics, well, you uh, make progress, but you are limited by the PAM service capacity. Indeed, you face some complexities, uh, you need more expertise, it takes time. So capacity, the capacity of the services can uh, impede service development if you don't pay attention to it. So this is one of the other aspects you must keep an eye on. Once you've overcome those three challenges, you also have the service planning capacity. 
the more users you have, the more you develop the activities and those services, uh, the more you need to uh, plan services, including when it comes to CPU uh, and so on. You must always uh, make sure you have a quality service without downtime. The uh, final difficulty is the following. PAM can adapt to pretty much all the technologies and therefore you need expertise on the different uh, technical fields that are linked to the PAM. There are different technical fields uh, that are complex, sometimes difficult to integrate. So you need to get the good talents, the good skills, in order to deal with those uh, technical fields. So to sum up, you are highlighting to what extent the PAM uh, projects uh, will focus not only on the PAM infrastructures and facilities, but uh, will also uh, depend on uh, the staff, uh, the, the, the talents and uh, the way uh, the different uh, accounts are managed. Yes, absolutely, the PAM is a central solution there's a true relationship that has to be built between the different businesses, the different perimeters, in order to have something operational. And it would bring solutions this way, yes. So to overcome those challenges, there is one way to do. That's the blueprint. So the Blueprint, Drinin, maybe you can tell us a bit more about that blueprint? Yes, thank you. So the different issues raised by Julien are not specific to uh, Kajip. These uh, challenges are faced by numerous clients. So to uh, well, having a, a proper team is not enough anymore. You need a roadmap. You need to find a way to implement the different programs. And this is why we had the idea in 2019, uh, because we had been working on that issue for more than 20 years. We saw uh, successes, we saw failures, and we decided to capitalize on that uh, experience. And so we decided to create a framework that we could provide to the different companies uh, so that they could implement a PAM a program uh, in a sustainable way. This is why we gathered different teams, so production teams, uh, R&D, uh, and so on. And with those teams, we created the CyberArk Blueprint. What is the blueprint? The blueprint is uh, several feedbacks, several recommendations that we combine and that we send to the companies so that they succeed in implementing the PAM program. The CyberArk blueprint uh, aimed mostly at uh, finding a way to uh, stop uh, the uh, cyber attacks against privileged accesses. This is why we focused that framework on three main risks. That's the next slide. Thank you very much. So the goal is the following. Whether you are in a cloud, a physical or hybrid environment, the attacks on a privileged uh, accounts are threefold. There are three techniques. The first one is, okay, I get access to a workstation, I will try to use the information, and use the information to make a vertical or horizontal move, get into a zone with interesting servers, and then abuse those servers, uh, make a, a privileged escalation in order to get access to the information system. So all the recommendations we decided to integrate in the, in the document 
uh, focus on those three types of attack. So we always wonder, does such and such action have uh, an impact on uh, the information system? Next slide, please, Mathieu. We created, in the end, a framework that includes several recommendations uh, divided in five steps. So the goal is to look at uh, how we can uh, mitigate the risks, stop the attacks, uh, secure the, the basic information. So these are step one and two, and then you'll have the, the other uh, steps so that we look at the uh, verticalities and the privilege uh, accounts and privilege escalations. But we didn't want, well, we, did, we wanted to do more. We wanted to give practical recommendations that can be implemented. And we tried to sum it up in the next slide. It's not this one, sorry. Anyways, so we try to summarize this here on this slide. Five big steps. Step one, it's about securing the identification information that represent the core business of the company. So that is the AD, uh, the cold route from the cloud. These are accesses which are ready. Um, uh, targeted by uh, attackers, hijackers. So this is what we know, things that we know well, that we can deal with or handle easily. Secondly, now that you have seek all the core activities of the company, you'll secure the technologies that most use in the company, Windows, Linux, you, you name it. Then if you can do that, you have the strict minimum. What you need absolute necessity to have a security program with privileges and then you move forward with privileged lists that bring more security but which are more complex to implement. Then you'll deal with the application part which is a broad topic. It's about human access but it's also about apps access. So we have more agile apps than other apps later and then the classical apps and eventually the complex ones. And then the last stage is about the details. It's about the last, the very last details to have a fully fledged program. So this blueprint is not just about a roadmap and a series of technical recommendations on a specific perimeter that requires security. Uh, no, you need to do more. You need to bring the methodology, the strategy, because it implies changes. So it's hard to accept change. So you have to handle it. We'll make recommendations on to how to deal with this change management, how to improve the change management, and how to go from a system which is not managed by SEPA to one which is. So we'll explain how we use automation to uh, give time to our teams so that they can focus on new perimeters. We'll also try to see how we, how can I put it, give priority over to one field over another. And what you should keep in mind and there, are try to not uh, waste your time and be the only one who speaks, but what you must remember is that you need a framework. So we need to work with the client, with our partners, so that together we can adapt the framework to each client. It's uh, according to their constraints. Okay, so we should not always start with AD or always finish with the framework accounts. So it depends on every single client. That's why we make our uh, study, we assess the situation and we make a roadmap. Also remember that the roadmap needs to be adapted and changed. It's not something you set for three years. Now we do a regular follow-up on a roadmap every three months, for example. So it depends on every single client. And when you move forward with the roadmap, you adapt it to make sure you have a successful program. So thank you for your patience and I'm done. All right, so as you said, we explained how an attacker, a hijacker moves around the company. 
with no, he, he is going through one level to another and gets more privilege. And so what we have presented here with this first recommendation is that we need to work on risks. We need to secure what matters the most to prevent uh, hackers to have full control of infrastructure. And then you're going down a stream uh, to work on less critical uh, or first critical apps and then less critical apps. So it's a risk-based approach, uh, which also tells us that a perimeter is fully covered when you cover everything that's in it. That's the approach that we're taking with the blueprint. So for Capgemini, there are two things. That's the commercial part of it. it will be short, don't worry. First, we bring the right skills to the project. We we'll work on three main priorities. First, this is that something that we own, this blueprint. We do not hesitate to uh, take the necessary or make the necessary effort. We have people who constantly work on improving our tool, then international presence, and then we have a, a seasoned uh, experts, of course. Then our approach can be different from what's uh, proposed by the editor. So, first, we'll try to work on change and an ambassador. Who's the ambassador? Well, the ambassador is a person that will be onboarded fast. So, it's a bit contradictory to what was proposed in the blueprint, which is focusing on risk. We propose an additional approach with Capgemini. We say, okay, there's a risk. You can't escape it. You have that project. But in a very regulated project, you try to have another approach with ambassadors. So we try to have an idea, uh, speak about the ambassadors, have a team, and we'll try to get their support. Because then we'll try to get their support and get support from other people, thanks to them. So that's what Julia said, you need support from the teams. So this is why we have our blueprint with an approach focusing on an increasing difficulty. So for each scope, we have an A to Z approach. It's machine to machine, for example. So we try to convince ambassadors. Then we have tier one or tier zero, tier one to keep moving forward. Then we'll be working on higher level. This infra scope, pipelines, hypervisors, because you need more maturity. You need maturity to deal with that. You need to w work with the ups part to actually start working on the pipelines. So this is something which is constantly moving. So we need feedback, concrete feedback to move forward too. They have the network admin side that comes afterwards. This is a complex type of usage. It requires a system coverage. You need to cover different apps. And finally, you have the main frame. This approach that we're proposing today, just a bit like what it was said before, is not something that we limit ourselves to. However, we need a driver. You need a risk-based approach as proposed before or Another approach, which is about leading change or hybrid approach, because this is how, always how it will happen. You'll face constraints, limitations, you have to secure the critical part of your uh, activity. This is a model that you'll be looking for. You, you must have the right methodology. What is the right methodology? Well, the regulatory driver is very important in our, most of our projects. They, most of them have a regulatory driver, although we see that some other projects are taking place in less regulated uh, process like the retail sector. And they have a risk-based approach. This is where the doctrine is very important. So these things will evolve according to the constraints, but first you must understand how things work. Then you need to bring added value. So you cannot get support from the teams without new value if you cannot help them automate their usage and so on. Thirdly, you need to understand the products, the PAM products, but also the usage, how they're used in the mainframe. 
you need to understand how it works, you need to put yourself in the shoes of the people who will be using that. And if they don't like to use your solution, why? They're not just against change, but they do things differently. They say that with your solution, they'll have to have, they'll have to click eight times, whereas they used to have something much more simple. So we need to understand this, and you have to better understand the product to adapt it to the usage. And concretely, we need to understand activities. We need to understand products to uh, to push change, because the project should be steered by the good understanding of the product. So this slide. So it's like morning. Changing is like morning. Why? Well, at the beginning, you have a situation. It's denial. I don't understand your project. I don't know what you're talking about. What's a PAM tool? Then it's escalation. And you'll see that with my boss because I have to work. I'm sorry, I'm already doing conversion on 4SIs. And have things to do so just speak to my supervisor then it's about negotiations you don't understand what I do that's not privilege accounts it's not administration that's the only scope then it's about curiosity but could you do this or that with your solution and then acceptance so concrete terms details to, 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 to fight it now you only need to organize workshops to understand how people use the system. It's okay, there's a project to secure, regardless of the driver. So there's a project and we should be able to raise your awareness about it. We need to inform you on the PAM issue. Secondly, escalation. You need to find the right sponsors for your project, the people who will be supporting you and say, okay, this project is necessary. It is necessary to reduce the risk. So we'll help you third stage you should it's the onboarding of the sponsors uh, when it comes to defining the scope so, uh, that's all uh, that's about administration and that's what's not so it's important to have somebody who makes a decision and says this is part of this scope and it's an administration uh, action and it's covered by the PAM St stage four it's about nourishing curiosity you need to propose breaks, rooms, Q&A's, and so on. So, uh, you know, small videos to, to make people feel like they would like to work on the product. And the last stage, it's important, that's acceptance. So once you get curious, once you use the product, you need to work with the team for full acceptance because they're the ones who have to use it. So when they move on with another type of usage, more agile uh, usage, they're the ones who have to help transform the projects. So by doing this, you can actually do this cover, regardless of the driver, you know, regardless of the risk, the ambassadors change the program and so on. So with this type of work, this, uh, you'll actually and be able to drive change for the team. You'll be working with workshops and you'll be running the project. So this is an easy demonstration. This is what Julia said at the very beginning. First, you have a PAM project. So it's about creating a PAM tool. So you have to define how it's going to work. Then you have to find uh, examples and the blueprint is about examples and teams and that's how you work so it's about leading change it's about finding uh, the right technique to improve the tool to enrich the tool and then add new elements so for the first part we can add automation industrialization that's very important so we'll work in this mode all the time we'll be adding a team a scope uh, regardless of your roadmap and that's how it will be implemented so it's iterative 
Once you have a tool like CBAR, you also have to create life to the program. You have to run the platform because it is under production. You have created your first teams, and once the teams have been set up, they'll start working. And the company will keep working. You need to evolve, you need to drive them, you need to teach them how to use the platform, etc., etc. So this is where you go from a project to a program. So there we try to implement the first project and then we try to implement the blueprint with the different phases and the program management and the run that's behind. <coughs> That's what we did for the blueprint part. So this is how it works. What do you think? Yeah, we need to work at different scales. And we see how Ketchup is evolving. So we need to get reorganized when it comes to proposing services. So when it comes to the organization, we wanted to have a um, one-stop shop to work with the different projects, the different um, uh, specialties and so on. So to make sure that we can uh, understand requests uh, and provide answers. And then we'll see how we can adapt our components and we're developing the run part. It is necessary to automate some tasks. The objective is that we should be able to uh, work on everything that could be automated. And when it comes to organization, we should be able to work on the entrance uh, or the access point and then automate and then have this iterative approach as we explained before. When it comes to deployment, well, there, there's a program over three years to organize the transformation of the SAP Kajib. So we'll start designing a true roadmap with the blueprint, And try to have this on continuous onboarding, you know, to have the capacity to deal with the entire Kajib perimeter. All right, so if there's a, a partnership, there's a role for everyone. So, first, at Credit Agricole, they must set the priority for the scopes. Then we need to find a driver, we need to set the priorities and see why this should be done. They're dealing with the onboarding and services brought to the teams, not only the PAM part, but creation of access, the way you'll work tomorrow in the future and so on and so on. CyberArk is the editor the, with a vision, the, they're in charge of the blueprint, it's a strong element. They're providing support to the teams when it comes to onboarding. And Capgemini is the integrator. They will co-design this with Credit Agricole. They will provide advice on, on this thanks to their customer experience and thanks to their experience on technologies. Because then with the PAM, you must understand the, the way people use the system. And then the run part, it's about making sure that the, you keep working and that uh, infrastructure key is still up and running and then it, it will be evolving and it's, that's your role actually to do that. So once you get the blueprint and the partnership with the CyberArk and Credit Agricole and Cape Gemini. Well, Julien, can you tell us what are the new objectives of the program? Well, like I said before, it's an onboarding process for the industry with automation um, from beginning to end. 
So with production cycles, with onboarding periods, you must have a clear approach, actually, in your work. You need to clearly secure all this and, and improve your onboarding capacity. And it's also about automation for the component management on the management of applications and connectors. So this is a, it's a very important uh, work field. And then we try to improve the understandability of the offer to make sure that we go beyond a, a mere security framework for the Cyber Defense Center. And we try to get something that will guide us in the way we implement things, in the way we secure a project uh, to, to design something in a company. All right, as a conclusion, the program, the evolution, how things happened for Credit Agricole in its evolution since 2012. Well, we have the adoption of the blueprint, the roadmap, the creation of the roadmap. Then you have to adapt the organization. You have to reorganize all that. You need to, to find the right partners to work in a trustworthy environment. You need to reset objectives to cover the regulation part, the onboarding, etc. Uh, that's still two minutes if you have any question. All right, thank you. I think it was clear. Thank you for your attention. So since we still have two minutes, let's say something more. We don't want to have a funnel effect. So we want to have this program adopted. You need to work on a step-by-step -step approach. You need to find a roadmap define a blueprint, adapt your organization. You must be aware of what is at stake and the challenges presented by Julien. These are things he's seen. Choose the right partners, find the right objectives and increase your scope, little by little. Thank you everyone for your attention. Bye-bye.